All right, let's continue with our radical quest here. Um, in this section, we're going to be looking at uh, a bit more division. Specifically, we'll look at uh, rationalizing the denominator when uh, I have a radical expression that has um, a radical in the denominator. Okay, one thing that we've uh, always done when we in math is there certain ways that you need to express your answer. For example, if I have something like 2 over 4, you look at that and you just shudder and say, well, you can't leave it like that. You have to simplify that fraction down to 1 half. Similarly, in radicals, we've got a, another situation that when you look at it, you should say, oh, oh, I've got to fix that. And that, the feeling that you get there, you should get whenever you see a radical on the bottom of a fraction. If I see it on the top and the, the bottom is just a plain old 3, I'm, well, I shouldn't put a question mark, I'm a happy guy right there. But if I see a radical on the bottom, oh, I got some work to do. I need to, I need to change that. I need to get rid of the radical on the bottom. So today we're going to look at two different ways that you can do that. First, we'll look at ones where you have one term on the bottom. Uh, and then we'll look at one where you have two terms on the bottom. So here's the first one. So if I have a radical expression like this one, I know that I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 over the square root of 5. I know the square root of 4, I guess I could write that as 2 over the square root of 5. But I look at that and I shudder because there's a radical on the bottom. That's a thou shalt not. You can't do that. And so I need to have a way of getting rid of that radical on the bottom. Well, if on the bottom I only have one term that's a radical, the way I get rid of that is simply by, I always say simply. <laughs> I guess it's not simple sometimes. But the way I get rid of that is I multiply both top and bottom by this exact uh, radical. So I'm going to multiply the bottom by root 5. And I can do that as long as I multiply the top by root 5. See that factor of 1 raising its head again there? I use that, uh, uh, in math we use that lots. So now on the bottom, let's see what happens. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. Oh, I know that's a perfect square. That's plain 5. And on the top, I have 2 times the square root of 5, which is just 2 root 5. So I'll just carry that over here. So here is my simplification of this original uh, expression. There was a radical on the bottom, had to get rid of it. To do that, just multiply it by the exact same one. Let's try one with a cube root. Ah, a cube root might be interesting. Hmm. Well, first let's change this. So this is the cube root of 7 over the cube root of 6. Now, oh, I got a radical on the bottom. Ouch, can't have it. Got to fix it. Uh, so how am I going to go about doing that? Because it, on the top it was square root. I guess when I multiplied root 5 by root 5, I got the square root. Let me write this up there. I really got the square root of 5 times 5. And since it was a square root, I needed two things inside to bring one out. Maybe I need to use that same rationale down here. So if I want to simplify this, I'll leave the top as the cube root of 7. And on the bottom, I've got cube root of 6 there. But I need to multiply it by, it'll have to be the cube root of something. But what I'm wanting to get is three of the identical things inside. So it looks like I'm going to multiply it by the cube root of 6 times 6. And if I do that on the bottom, of course, I have to do that on the top. Factor of 1 trick, right? So on the top, I'm going to get the cube root of 7 times 6 times 6, whatever that works out to, over, I'll get the cube root of 6 times 6 times 6. Notice that at this point here, 6 times 6 times 6, the cube root of that will simply be plain old 6. And then on the top, I'm going to have uh, the cube root of whatever 7 times 6 times 6 is. Let's do that quick. 
42 times 6, that would be about a 12. I'm calling it 256, is that right? 12 carry 1, yeah, close. 256. So the cube root of 256 over 6. I'm hoping that's right. I'm worried about my multiplication. Well, it's 36 times 7. I did something wrong there. 7 times 6 is 42. Oh, 6 times 2 is 12, not a 2 there. That's what I did wrong. 252. Sorry, 252. I used to say I've never made mistakes in math, but uh, after the first class, I knew that I, I would make more mistakes. All right, so now I have this in a good form. I can relax now. I don't have a radical on the bottom. I'm happy. Cube root of 252 over 6. Let's try another one. Here, when I take a look at this, I see rationalizing with two terms. So if I have two terms on the bottom, I have to do something slightly different. Well, I guess it's actually quite a bit different, but I'm, I'm, I see a radical on the bottom, and my eyes see red. i got to fix that. In order to fix that so that I don't have a radical on the bottom, what I do is I multiply. Uh, I'm just going to rewrite this. 5 plus 1 over the square root of 3 minus y. I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. Now the conjugate of the denominator is the same denominator, so root 3 and y, but instead of a minus in the middle there, I put a plus. Doesn't matter what the sign is in front, the only sign that changes is the one in the middle, this one. If I do that on the bottom, I'm going to have to do that, of course, on the top to follow my factor of 1 rule. So here I've got root 5 plus 1, and I'm going to have to multiply it by this. And on the bottom, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Looks like a whole lot of <laughs> multiplication of radicals. Right on, I'm in. Okay, so let's foil the top. Root 5 times 3 is root 15. Root 5 times y would just be... I guess, plus y root 15. 1 times root 3 would just be a plus root 3. And 1 times y would just be a y. Okay, top looking real ugly. <laughs> See how the bottom looks. Root 3 times root 3 is root of 9, which is 3. That's not bad. Root 3 times y would be a plus y root 3. Looking ugly. Um, minus y times 3 would be a minus y root 3. Oh, I'm liking that. And finally, minus y times y is a minus y squared. So simplifying a little bit, um, I guess I maybe could use the distributive property to get those together, but I'm just going to leave them. Root 15 plus y root 15 plus root 3 plus y. Not a whole lot that I could do up there at the top. But on the bottom, notice that these cancel out. So I'm left with 3 minus y squared. And, although it looks a little bit ugly, I'm real happy now because I don't have a radical on the bottom. One last question for this section. Um, be careful when you see on the bottom here, when you see uh, uh, two terms like this. Take a look at the last one and see the difference. Let me see if I can grab this one. Yeah, I can. Let me copy it. And let me paste it here. And I'd like you just to compare uh, the two. Okay, top is identical. But the bottom, notice that this one has a radical that extends over top of both of these terms. But this one, it only extends over this one. So in the question we just did on the last page, this one here, um, this has two terms on the bottom. If there's two terms, I need to do the conjugate trickery with it. But if there's only one term like this one, and there's only one term because there's just one radical there, if I only have one radical there, then I'm not going to do the conjugate thing. All I'm going to do is multiply the top by um, root 3 minus y and multiply the bottom by root 3 minus y. Okay, that's the only thing that I'll do. And I'm going to have to, of course, do my distributive property on the top and the bottom ones, the radicals will cancel, and I'll just be left with 3 minus y. 
But I just wanted to make that distinction. You have to be careful about a one term versus two term. This is one term because the radical groups everything inside there, one term. Whereas this one, I had a root three minus y, I had two terms. Okay, so that's uh, a few more little pieces of information that you need to practice on using uh, radicals. Try some questions. Holler if you have troubles.